So, so what's a personality disorder? Well, personality disorder um, is a label that we give to people who have long-standing, pervasive difficulties in relating to others and themselves. So what I mean by long-standing and pervasive is um, it's not just in one situation, it's across multiple situations. So it might be at home, at work, with their friends, um, and it's long-standing. So you've seen evidence of it, certainly within the late teens and early 20s, and you're seeing it across a number of, a number of years. A really helpful way of thinking about it is people are surviving so they've developed ways of behaving and relating to others mm. and thinking of themselves so that they can survive the environment they're in okay and so I so don't they're really... adapting exactly adapting and maybe thriving in certain environments with those traits and mm. those behaviours. Mm. But when they then find themselves in a different setting, they suddenly find, hang on, this way of being is mm. not helping me and it's getting me into trouble or it's not making me feel great about okay. myself. Okay, people are trying to navigate as best they can. Exactly. Okay. It feels like that's a, a way of honouring what people are trying to do rather than it being framed as a problem. Exactly. And I think that that is often how personality disorder can be talked about mm. and I think the term can be seen in a stigmatising mm. way. Um, because even the word personality disorder, what it, it sounds like is it's saying there's something wrong with your personality. Exactly. Whereas it sounds like you're kind of saying actually you've done your best to cope or fit in in a really tricky environment. Exactly. You've done what you needed to do to survive. Okay. And when you think of it in that way, it's, it's much more a positive. Okay. It may be that from your early life experiences, you've learned that people are likely to abandon you. They're right. likely to leave you or people aren't to be trusted because right. in your life you've experienced abuse or neglect. And so, of course, it's been useful. So it's you. kind of like people have got patterns and templates that they take forward. Exactly. It's been useful for you to be very suspicious of other people and their intentions because that's what right. meant you'd survived. So um, personality disorders can be quite different then, there's all sorts of different... Yeah, and I think that there is, there's some controversy I think about how many and what they look like mm. um, and often people may be diagnosed with more than one um, and so for example people may have heard of antisocial, may have heard of narcissistic, um, may have heard of borderline People with antisocial traits may well be quite hypervigilant or hyper aware to potential threats from others. And as we said before, it would have been useful for them at some point right. in their life. However, later on is not not so helpful. So they're so they're vigilant to threat and then reacting in an unhelpful way. Exactly. Maybe someone with narcissistic traits may well have a feeling that they are superior, that they are they are right um, and that, that can get them into tricky situations interpersonally when other people mm. find that mm. quite difficult. And then you mentioned borderline personality disorder. With borderline traits someone might be sort of hyper aware about for someone distancing themselves or someone likely to leave so there can be a real fear of abandonment that's that's real a real fear of that. Okay. Um, the other person might not be aware that they've done anything that would have indicated that. Other people would see it as difficulties managing emotions. They may well have stemmed from never having those emotions validated, not being able to express feelings or feeling that things have been shut down. Mm. So, as we've said, it's there are reasons why mm. these things have mm. developed and mm. at some point they would have been very useful. Mm. People ask me what it's like to have borderline personality disorder. I tell them it's like I'm on a roller coaster, one that never ends. I'm insecure. As soon as I get close to someone, I worry they're going to leave. I mean, everyone always leaves in the end, but what did I do this time? I freak out. 
I can't do this alone. Sometimes I plead. I know it can get too intense. But like, this person is the best thing that's ever happened to me. And then... One minute I love them, the next minute I hate them. How could they do this to me? They knew I wasn't okay, but they still didn't help me. I can't believe I told them all this about me and this is how they've treated me. My feelings are chaotic. One minute I'm fine, happy, ecstatic even. And then out of nowhere, it's like the whole world is caving in. The smallest thing sets me off. A comment or a look that gets me thinking, what does that mean? It's like one thing can ruin my day. I was fine a minute ago. There's no reason for me to feel like this, but there I go all the same. It just comes out of nowhere. I can go from zero to a hundred and back again, just like that. When I'm really stressed, everything gets a bit weird. I feel like I'm not here, like I don't know what's going on. It's hard to describe. I feel like I'm floating past everyone around me. Sometimes I hear voices. That's really scary. I feel like I'm watching myself from across the room. People can't keep up. It's the anger they don't get. I really lose my shit sometimes. Afterwards, I know it wasn't such a big deal, but at the time, it seems like the biggest thing ever. I feel out of control, like I'm going to punch someone. I just explode. It feels like I'm never going to feel anything else ever again. But then when it's gone, it's gone. I look back and I feel so ashamed. I hate the way I treat people sometimes. And then comes the urges. I need to feel this pain, I deserve it. It's the only thing that can dull the hurt inside. So I do it. I hurt myself to try and hurt less. How does that make any sense? It's not just the self-harm though. I act on impulse. There's no thinking involved. I'll deal with the consequences later. The only constant thing is the emptiness. I feel nothing. There's nothing there. A void. A desolate wasteland that stretches for miles and miles in all directions. I feel so alone. Even when I'm around people, I try and fill that void. But there it is. I guess the truth is, I don't know who I am. I'm a different person around different people. A chameleon. I think maybe if I change my appearance, I'll find myself. I lose myself when I'm not around people. I need someone to tell me who I am. Why does my brain not work? Why am I so broken? I am my mental illness. I have nothing else. So is there a treatment for a personality disorder? Yes, there are. There are many treatments. Um, for borderline personality disorder, um, we have the treatment called DBT, and that stands for Dialectical Behavioural Therapy. Okay, so what does dialectical mean? So dialectical is a fancy philosophy word um, that's based on the word dialectic. And all dialectics means is that you can have two opposite positions that can both be true at the same time. So kind of like a contrast, but not. Yeah, um, so if, if we maybe use an example, so the main dialectic in DBT is acceptance and change. So accepting the reality of the life that you're in at the moment versus change. So um, that to be able to generate change, you need to be motivated and prepared to try to do something different. And that might be trying things that you haven't tried before to manage differently. Okay, so change is there to help them see or to help someone see the happier side of life um no it's not necessarily the happier side of life um by changing how you choose to manage something that might generate more positive emotions um but at the start of therapy it will be accepting the position that, that you're in and, and being able to use some of the strategies that we teach you to manage differently and reduce the intensity of those negative emotions so where did this treatment come from so DBT was developed in the 1980s by someone called Marsha Lineham in America. And um, she generated 
DBT because what she found was when she initially started looking at traditional behavioural therapies that they weren't effective in treating suicidal um, patients and people that were struggling with behaviours like self-harm. So Marsha Linehan developed a therapy that used the validation you get from an acceptance approach while simultaneously utilising lots of strategies to generate change. So in practice, what would that look like? So in a full DBT outpatient programme, there are several different components. So let's go through those one by one. So if we start with a weekly two hour skills group, so we have the distress tolerance module and that teaches young people skills to manage in a crisis and reduce the chances of that crisis getting worse and helps them come out of it. Um, we have emotion regulation module and that module helps young people utilise skills to regulate their emotions, so proactively manage their emotions before they get out of control. And then we have an interpersonal effectiveness module and that helps young people develop skills to um, manage relationships more effectively, um, build new relationships, help them identify unhelpful relationships. and. Um, help them identify how to get what they want and need and how to have those needs met. And then we have the mindfulness skills, which are taught at the start of every module and underpin all other skills. So that's a skills group. What else is in treatment? So if we come to individual sessions next, um, so that's weekly individual sessions for about an hour with your individual therapist. And the primary um, goal of these sessions is to apply and personalise what you've learned in the skills group that we talked about. And we use things like um, chain analysis and solution analysis to do this. So we look at the behaviours that you may well have engaged in. And we look at the thoughts and associated feelings. And then we look at what, what else you could have tried to do to manage differently using some of the skills and strategies that you would have been taught in skills group. Okay, so it's kind of reviewing everything you've done in the week? Yeah, definitely. And, and we use a diary card to monitor that and, and to identify what it is that we're going to um, specifically review in more detail in that session. So you have a skills group and then you have individual. Is there anything else? Yeah, there is. Um, so then we have DBT phone coaching and this is a, a phone line that's manned by an individual therapist and the function of this, this part of the therapy is that when you're actually in that situation or when you're in a situation that maybe you're struggling to manage that you can ring or text in and receive support direct from the therapist holding the line to coach you through that situation. So um, it's described as helping you implement these skills within your natural environment. Would that be a therapist you've worked with before? Um, yeah, so it, it can be, it, it might not be though. We take turns holding the line in, in the team that I work in. So is this line like a crisis line? Um, no, it's, it's a bit different from that because we really emphasise to the people that we work with that it's about calling before you reach crisis. So we might have somebody ring and say that they feel really emotionally overloaded and they don't know how to manage their emotions and they're having really extreme urges to maybe, for example, hurt themselves. Um, but we would also encourage somebody to use it if maybe they've had an argument with somebody at home and they're not sure how to manage that and they need some support managing some of their interpersonal skills. Okay. So apart from group therapy and individual therapy in the phone, is there anything else? Yeah, so there is. <laughs> um, and that's, that's more for the, for the therapist. And that's what we call a DBT consultation team. And this occurs um, on a weekly basis for two hours. And the individual therapists are expected to attend. And this is about helping the, the therapist turn the model in on themselves. So it supports the therapist maintaining um, motivation to work with their young people. Um, it will help the therapist um, formulate whatever it is that's going on for that young person and maybe suggest solutions. If you or someone you know is affected by the issues raised in this film, there are places that you can go for help and support. There is a lot of information available on the internet which can sometimes be confusing or misleading. In the links below this film, you can find a list of some trusted organisations that publish high quality, reliable information and give advice on evidence-based treatments.